Okay, YouTube. Finally, it's done and it is time for a sketchbook tour. You know, I do want to put in a small disclaimer in here that I keep saying sketchbook like out of habit, but I do just want to say that this is not a sketchbook. It is an art journal. And when I say art journal, I mean that I purposefully made this journal on purpose to be full of completed works of of art to be completed illustrations so there's no sketches in it there's no silly doodles there's no like practice like it was made with the intent of being full of illustrations really and yeah well um we'll begin this is the strathmore tone tan mixed media paper my last sketchbook art journal sorry if i keep saying sketchbook i'm gonna keep doing it my last art journal was the same thing but it was the hard bound cover this was the soft bound one and i decided to go with this one this time instead because i thought it would be easier to scan i do like for my illustrations to be in a bound journal the reason why i started doing them in bound journals was because i liked the idea of like a, a coffee table book yeah so i wanted it to be like a decorative book one day i would like to have my own art book but for now we're gonna make my own by hand the only thing with this one that i don't like is the fact that i mean you can probably see it like the soft journal it gets any scratches or imprints on it and i don't particularly like the feel of it it's kind of like nails on a chalkboard but it is easier to scan in illustrations because it's a lot more flexible but just not my favorite material that it's made out of the first page in my sketchbooks i always get nervous when it comes to the first page because i'm afraid that i'm going to already destroy it so i usually just spare myself the agony of just i uh, just like filling it with essentially swatches so it's a good little hack for you if you're nervous of ruining the very first page just fill it with swatches it's okay it's fine my actual first page here oh i need to put like the date on here it is now 2023 so i started this in 2022 but i apparently didn't write down what month i started it in it is now july 2023 so this has definitely taken me a year probably more than a year to get this finished this first page i actually did when i was working on my previous art journal but I just got so excited because I had just gotten this new book. I wanted to put something in it already. So I did this page first while I was still working on my previous journal and I just used it as like the first page. So I still really enjoy this illustration. I think this is when I had just discovered Small Blue as well. This is the Small Blue by Holbein, the acrylic gouache. And it's just a really pretty blue color. It's super matte, super flat, and I really liked it. And I wanted this to kind of look like newspapery, clippy outy, like if I was doing sort of like a collage. So that's kind of the reason why it looks the way that it do. And then I have a thing for stars too. That has not, I've not gotten over that yet. I do like stars. And those ones I did actually use gold on those. So they're kind of shiny. So I like him. The second page, I decided on this journal that I wasn't gonna do front and back. I think my last journal, I didn't do that either. I did do a art journal once where I did every single page front and back and that just got too, it was too much. One thing, you lose interest in your journal really quickly. You just kind of get overwhelmed and then you're over it. And the other thing is too, is I've had quite a few people ask me if they could buy originals, but then you don't want, really want to sell any originals if you have artwork on the front and the back. You can't display both of them. So I was like, you know, we're just gonna stop doing the front and back thing on purpose anyway. So I do have a lot of empty space on the backs of pages, but I did that on purpose. But this page was of course my fan art illustration I did of Lady and the Tramp. And this was one of the last ones. I say last ones, but I did finish this a long time ago. I had done this illustration originally, like I had sketched it out and then I had moved on to other illustrations. But overall, it came out better than I had expected and I probably should have done it sooner. So I'm glad that I did it. And I think it looks cute online as well. All of these are done with watercolor and gouache, by the way. This is one of the first illustrations I did in this book as well. Just a little smoosh face, sleepy guy. That's white watercolor and white gouache with acrylic gouache. And then this one, I think this was the first 
major illustration that I did in this book where I was surprised that I had actually created it. Like, I don't know how I did it. And I still really like this illustration. He's very Disney-ish, but it looks like a completed illustration. Like I actually planned it out when in reality, I kind of just drew him on accident and then it became something. And then when it was finished, I was like, how did I do that? Cause I'll never be able to replicate it again. Although I tried, I tried to replicate it again but I was not successful. So I still really like him. I think he's super cute, super colorful, super fun. And this page as well. So I had liked this guy so much. I kind of wanted to like replicate the style of it cause he just surprised me. And I, again, I still really like him that I kind of accidentally did like a repeat like of the same theme. And this one also kind of came out of accident. I didn't draw it on purpose. What had happened was I had, I think I saw like a, sometimes in like the grain of the paper, does anybody else do this where you're looking at the grain of the paper and in the paper itself, you're thinking, I, I see something, I see something in there. I'll do that too with like textures on like floor. Like if I'm staring at wood paneling or something, sometimes I'll see Im illustrations or I'll see images in like the wood paneling and I'll be like, huh, that looks like an illustration. It's kind of like looking at clouds, like, oh, I see something in the clouds there. This was, I had seen something in like the grain of the paper and it was like the start of this dude's head up here. And then I realized, well, that is super inconvenient because I kind of liked the shape of his face, what I had done, but I had it in like the middle of the paper, which was really sad because what am I supposed to do now that his face is in the middle of the paper? So I had to kind of create an illustration around it. So I had created this dude right here who gave me a lot of issues because I had to kind of meet the size requirements. So somehow I had to make his head about the same size as his head, but I had to make it like different and I struggled a lot, but I actually think it came out really, really well. And this surprised me because I don't know how I created it either. And I still think it's a wonderful illustration and I, you know, it still follows the same theme as the other one. So they just all kind of go together. But overall, I surprised myself. Don't know how I did it. Wouldn't be able to replicate it if you asked me to do so. The next page, you can see I now have like this theme. It's just going to be a continuing theme throughout the rest of the thing. So this, again, I was wanting to draw something, didn't know what to draw. And when I'm bored, I usually default to like side profiles. So now you know my secret. If you can't, if you didn't notice that to begin with, that I default to side profiles, that's what I do. So I wanted to paint something. I guess I had a day off and I just desperately wanted to do something with my hands. And then he accidentally popped out totally by accident, but again, matches the theme of the other two. So I kept him, I think he's still pretty cool. I like his little face shape. I did little extra stars as well, just in case in the future, I needed little extra stars for something like decorations for a tumbler or something. So that's what those are. This one is my only like cheat page. There's nothing on here and I probably should have fixed that. So what had happened was way back here. So I had accidentally on this side drew a little moon dude and I didn't necessarily mean to draw him there. Cause again, I was trying to create like a cohesive book, but I did, I accidentally drew him and then I regretted that I didn't do him on his own like page, like on this side, because I had already drawn something else on the other side. So I had regretted that I had drawn him over here and that he didn't have like a background. So I was like, I kind of wish I had like some sort of like a background. Maybe I could crop him out and put him in another illustration, but you know, what background could go with him. Also, when I had done this one, I decided I did not like the blue color for the background of here. So I painted myself a separate background. So this is just a lavender background. And then if I wanted to in the future, maybe I could like crop these out and then put them like on top of here but that was just kind of my attempt and i didn't have any more of this colored paper in particular because if i was going to start cropping things i needed the same colored texture to match so this is the only page where this is just a blank background there's nothing on it, it ruins the aesthetic of the book but he's there and he's scanned it to my computer in case i need a purple background for any reason in the future anyway moving on so this one was had gotten a free sample of paints. The Kuretake brand sent me some paints to experiment with and they wanted me to post it on the internet. So I had drawn this illustration real quick 
with the intent and purpose of using the watercolors that they had sent me. So this was done with those watercolors. The background is acrylic gouache. And I think the flowers might be part acrylic gouache as well. But overall, he was drawn with those watercolors and they only sent me like six. So I was very limited on my color palette. So that's what that is. This one, I had also, I will tell you what, this past year I have had more stuff sent to me. Lord knows why or how people scoped me out and found me because I don't have that big of a following, but I do blame TikTok, I think. But Paul Rubens also sent me a watercolor set to test out and try. They might have given me a choice. They might have asked me, do you want watercolors or do you want something else? And I think the something else I had already owned, maybe, I don't really remember, but I went ahead and I chose the watercolors, but when the watercolors had gotten to me, they had turned out that they were like neon watercolors. And I was like, oh no, what do I do with neon? So I think I filmed that one. I think that's here on YouTube. My time frame is all sorts of screwed up. I can't remember what I've done on TikTok versus what I've done with YouTube, because I don't feel like my YouTube channel is as old as what it really is. But I think at this point I've made over like 50 videos. So that's long enough. But yes, I created this on purpose to use these purposeful neon watercolors because I didn't know what to do with them. Oh, also, coincidentally, I had also purchased the Schmincke neon watercolors. So now I had two watercolor sets that were neon. And my biggest fear with the neon watercolors was I knew that my scanner wasn't really going to be able to scan it in. I had purchased some other neon colors sometime in the past and my scanner just won't pick up the neon i don't know if anybody else has the issue my scanner is a good decade old at this point but it does not like neon colors so i was trying to figure out how to use these watercolors but still have them be able to scan into the computer and it, it for the most part i did it i think it was successful the only thing is, is i know like these yellows online do not show up and i had to um fix that a little bit but overall just a, a puppy dog on purpose to use neon colors this one was another accident i wanted to draw something but i didn't know what to draw and i had accidentally drawn his face and i kind of really liked the design of it i just kind of filled in the rest it kind of has a i think like a 1980s or maybe 1990s type of color palette and i was just trying to fill in the background with extra space but I still think he's pretty cute he looks pretty cute on just a plain white background on the internet this one I had an issue my main complaint with the Strathmore paper is I feel like the tan is a bit too dark my favorite tan paper is the the Hana Mule tan watercolor paper but it doesn't come in large size journals it only comes in four by six and I think five by five it does come in like nine by eleven in the sheets of paper but I would really like it to be in like a bound journal so I was trying to find some sort of like an alternative so that's why I've been using the Strathmore one but I did come across the Claire Fontaine journal and I think it was an 8x8 maybe but I had purchased it just to see if I liked the paper and I had drawn this illustration in the Claire Fontaine journal the problem was I <laughs> the, the watercolor paper in that journal did not hold up to my abuse paper started ripping and Overall, every time I laid more color down or if I tried to fix it, like the paper just kept ripping, which was really sad because I had actually enjoyed the sketch that I had for this one. I thought the sketch had come out really, really well. I thought the tigers had really cool fine lines and details in their faces. Luckily for me, I did take a photo of the original sketch because I do that. Whenever I have anatomy issues, I'll take a photo of the sketch and then I will flip it, you know, to check for anatomy errors and things that need to be fixed and stuff. So I had taken lots of photos of the original sketch in the other sketchbook. And so what I ended up doing, because I ruined that paper and I literally painted holes into it, I ended up tracing the original sketch into this journal. I made it a little bit larger. So this is a trace of a better sketch that I had done in my other journal that I ruined, but he still came out pretty good. I think I did a, a pretty good job uh, despite having to transfer him over. So anyways, I like them. This one was just like a quick and simple. I was trying to experiment with an old watercolor palette that I had used to use that I had been neglecting and it was obviously fall time. So I just did something really simple. Nothing really fancy about that one, just a simple little illustration. We had already shown this guy and this page. 
This one, once again, I had wanted to do something on a day off and I didn't know what to draw, so I just drew something real quick. So very simple, very basic, got it done really quickly within a couple of hours. And then it was an excuse to use greens. I have this tremendous collection of green colors and then I never use them. So it was just kind of on purpose. Let me use the paint that I don't use before it goes bad. This one again, I did this one about the same time as I had did this one. So again, I was wanting to use an old watercolor palette that I had been neglecting and I wanted to see if I could still use it. So I did like a quick little dude on purpose. Again, it was the fall season, so little fall leaves. I do kind of enjoy drawing fall leaves. I think they're a lot of fun, but that was what that was, just an excuse to use an autumn color palette with an old watercolor set that I don't really use anymore. So this one is the one that I literally just finished today. This is why I'm filming this video. This is the last thing that I did in this art journal. So this thing also has been in this journal for a long time, or the original sketch. It was like a half finished sketch and I kind of liked his face. Like I liked his facial features. I liked it enough to where I felt guilty about erasing it, but it also wasn't a completed illustration and I was having anatomy issues and I didn't just, I wasn't in the mood to finish it. I ended up like um, taking a photo of my original sketch and then finishing the sketch on my iPad, you know, to fix all the errors and such. However, it seems like it is a huge ordeal to me and I just lose interest trying to transfer over a sketch from my iPad back into the art journal. It's just a lot of work because you have to set up your ability to, to trace it. But that's what I ended up having to do. Again, I liked him enough to where I didn't want to erase him, but I also just wasn't in the mood to mess with him. And he actually scanned in, I think, better than what I thought he, he was going to. I don't know. He's a little plain, a little plain, a little boring. But I kind of, I still like his, his style. I like his facial features. This was the first illustration that I had done when we had moved into our new house. And we moved earlier this year. And we had finally gotten our furniture back. And I was like, I haven't been able to art in a while because I haven't had any of my furniture, haven't had any of my supplies. But we had just unpacked everything. I was like, I'm drawing something and I'm posting it to the internet. So this was the first thing I did when we were finally settled in after our move. This one I just posted relatively recently. I just did him a couple of days ago. So it was another illustration, another sketch where I didn't dislike the sketch enough to erase it, but I wasn't also totally impressed to feel like I wanted to paint it. But I was getting to the end of this sketchbook and I was like, I need to get this thing finished. We're just going to start coloring in things, coloring book style until it's done so I can move on. So again, recently I posted this in my previous video, the making of this guy, and I still kind of like him. I just yeah, I struggled with spots. That's my only regret is I struggled with spots, but it's okay because I learned from it and I wanted to try and do more leopards to try and better my spot ability. Tiger stripes, easy. Tiger stripes are fun. Lion manes are fun. Spots are really hard for me, so it's something to work on. Another more recent one, other tiger. I wanted to paint something, had a free day. Let's get something on the page and paint it. So that's what I did there. This one I still kind of like too. So this was also one of the ones that I did relatively recently. It's a nice little underwater aqua scene. Another more recent one that you guys saw not that long ago in a previous video. And then lastly, the end, which funny enough is not the last thing that I did in this sketchbook. So the two most toughest pages in a sketchbook to me, again, are the first page because you're afraid you're gonna destroy it. But then by the last page, you're so exhausted of trying to fill a sketchbook with creative things that you don't know what to do and you're just burnt out by the final page. So a couple of journals ago, I decided we we're literally just gonna put like an end. We're gonna put a booty on the final page. So that's kind of what I did here, except for it's his back legs and a tail. So it's to represent the end of the book. So but I did this one a couple days ago also, right before I finished this one. So I did this and then I did this one, but he kind of matches the very front page. It's the same small blue, 
kind of same sketchbooky style. So all that I need to do now is fill in the date, 2023. Oh, and then I guess the final, final page because you didn't want to leave that blank. This is just more swatches because I ran out of room on my first page up here. So I've got swatches and I've got swatches and we're all finished. So I guess now that I'm done with this, what are my plans moving forward? Technically, I do have more art journals that I could fill. Like I handmade my own art journal and it has several pages in it. Okay, like here we go. So last year, I think maybe, because I've posted this before too. This is that Hana Mule tanned watercolor paper, the toned tan watercolor paper. And I had made my own sketchbook out of it. Like I bound the sides of it together. So this one as well is like almost halfway full, maybe not quite one third of the way full. So I could go back through and finish this guy. Oh, look how cute you are. If I wanted to. And then I have this one too, which is what I did this guy in. So this one is not exactly like completed illustrations like there is some doodle doodles in here as well so i could always finish that one as well but i think I'm, I'm i'm tired this is approximately maybe my ninth journal where i've tried filling it you know beginning to end with illustrations and i'm and i'm kind of tired so it's just it's it's fun for the first couple of pages and then by the back half you're just so sick of it that you just don't feel like it anymore. And in a way, I do kind of feel like that makes my artwork suffer because I'm just trying to get it over with rather than actually trying to create something great. Not that I'm complaining because I just enjoy, mainly I enjoy the process of coloring and finishing. I don't particularly enjoy the process of drawing, uh, funnily enough. So any chance that I have to uh, color something is fun enough for me. So it's not really a complaint, but I think I could probably be more creative if I wasn't feeling like I was bound to something if I didn't feel like I had a responsibility to do this so I may just take a step back and then just do whatever uh, so I think maybe I don't know if I'm going to go back to just plain loose leaf paper which um, I'm still not really a fan of because I, I feel like I can't get inspired on loose leaf paper or I may just go back to just doing literally like silly doodles like in here I had the silly little mushrooms and like drinks like those are quick and simple and fun and it's something that I can do with my hands and they're stress-free. So I think I might just take a step back and do something like that, but I don't know, we will see. I don't know what to do with myself now that this is done, but I will create something again. But anywho, if you guys have any questions or concerns, if you needed to see something else in more detail, that's it. That is my journal. Do one more quick flip through. Those two are still my favorite. Yeah. So any questions, anything you need to see more in depth, let me know. But that's where I'm going to end this video for now. I will see you guys the next time. Thank you so much for watching this with me. Bye-bye.